Let me ask you a question. What would you do if you were walking through the woods in the middle of the night and you heard this sound? My guess is that you would either run for the hills or turn around and start fighting for your life. But why? Why would you do this? Well, the answer is obvious. It's because you're afraid and who wouldn't be afraid in a situation like this? But why are you afraid? Are you afraid because your heart starts to beat a little bit faster? Your palms start to sweat a little bit more? Your digestion begins to slow down and conserve energy? Or is it something else? Well, today we're gonna ask a classic what came first, the chicken or the egg question, but in relation to emotion. Are you afraid because you're running? Or do you run because you're afraid? Let's find out. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome to the School of Ireland. Today, we're gonna to be talking about emotions. Now, we've talked a little bit about fear so far, but as you know, there's an entire spectrum of emotions out there. That spectrum ranges from fear to excitement to anger to disappointment, and the list goes on. The first thing that's important for you to know is that there are three components to emotions that psychologists generally agree upon. The first component is physiological arousal. This is where your heart starts to beat a little bit faster, your palms start to sweat a little bit more, and your digestion begins to slow down in order to conserve energy. There's some other things that happen too, but we're not going to get into all that. The second component is a cognitive component. This is where your brain analyzes the situation. It goes, holy crap, I just heard a twig snap. That could be a threat. I need to do something about it. So your brain is processing what's going on. The last component is a behavioral component. This is the actual running or the fighting. So you have the physiological aspect, the cognitive aspect, and the behavioral aspect. What psychologists cannot agree upon is how these components interact with each other. And that's what we're gonna look at today, the different theories of emotion. The first theory we're gonna look at is called the common sense theory. The common sense theory says that some sort of external stimulus, whether it's a twig snapping in the woods, a car coming at you head on, or some silhouetted figure standing outside your room at night, some sort of stimulus is going to elicit an emotional response. And in this case, it's going to be fear. And in turn, the emotional response is gonna cause physiological arousal. Your heart's gonna beat faster, your palms are gonna sweat a little bit more, etc. So again, the stimulus causes the emotional response which in turn causes the physiological arousal. So as you can see, the common sense theory is a pretty straightforward theory, but many psychologists disagree with it. That's why we have the James Lang theory. The James Lang theory of emotion claims that an external stimulus is going to elicit an arousing response where the heart starts to beat faster and the palms get sweatier. And in turn, this arousal will cause you to feel afraid. In other words, this theory claims that the physiological arousal will elicit an emotional response. For some, the James Lang theory fell short. That's why Cannon and Bard came up with their own theory. Cannon and Bard said that an external stimulus will cause an emotional response and a physiological response to occur at the same exact time. In other words, that fear is going to kick in at the same time your heart begins to race. The next theory that we're going to talk about is called the Schachter-Singer two-factor theory, or as I like to call it, the Schachter two-factor theory. Unlike what we've seen so far, these men argue that there's a cognitive component to emotion. Let's take a look at what that means. So in this case, when the twig snaps, it elicits the same physiological response that we've talked about before. However, this time your brain is going to analyze what's going on. It's going to say, huh, my heart's beating faster, my palms are sweating, but but why is this happening? So it doesn't only take into account the physiological arousal, it's going to also look at what's causing that arousal. It's gonna look at the situation. Your brain's gonna say, okay, my heart's beating faster, and the reason it's beating faster is because I'm alone, it's dark out, and that twig just snapped behind me. In other words, your brain is gonna cognitively label what's going on. It looks at both the arousal and the stimulus, and after doing so, this leads to the emotional response. Now, in my opinion, the cognitive label is super important. Let me show you why. Let's take a slightly different scenario. Let's say you're riding a roller coaster instead. Well, what happens physiologically when you ride a roller coaster? Your heart starts to beat faster, your palms start to get sweatier. In other words, many different situations will produce similar arousing responses. And that's really important to understand. Your heart's gonna beat faster just like it did when the twig snapped behind you in the woods. But this is why the idea of a cognitive label is so important. Your brain's gonna see the bodily changes and go, hmm, why is this happening? Oh, it's because I'm riding a roller coaster. And for me, roller coasters are fun, and therefore my emotional response in this situation is either excitement or joy. So Schachter and Singer would argue that the cognitive label or the cognitive analysis plays a super important role in how we experience emotion. The Schachter-Singer theory didn't end up being the end-all, be-all theory of emotion. Two psychologists disagreed completely with this theory. Their names were Zayance and Ledeau. They argued that cognition does not always precede an emotional response. So let's take a look at what this means. Pretend you're walking down the street and a big hairy spider starts crawling up your leg. When you see the spider, this information is transmitted to your thalamus. Remember, 
The thalamus is the relay center for the brain. It's like the air traffic control center. According to Zions and Ladeau, the thalamus then routes this information directly to the amygdala, which is your brain's first responder to stress. However, if we take the same scenario and apply the Schachter two-factor theory to it, it would look like this. Once the information about the spider is transmitted from the eyes to the thalamus, the thalamus then transmits that information to the visual cortex and not directly to the amygdala. In the visual cortex, the neural image is then processed and identified with the help of other parts of the brain as a threat. This is where that cognitive labeling takes place and your brain goes, oh, that's a spider, it could be dangerous. Once it's identified as a threat, that information is gonna be sent to the amygdala for the stress response to kick in. It should be noted that Richard Lazarus, who was a big proponent of this cognitive appraisal concept, would also support Schachter and Singer's route for processing emotions, but we'll talk about him more in a minute. So if you think about it, the Zions and Ladeau theory is based off more primitive, instinctual, instant emotional responses. On the other hand, the Schachter two-factor theory Theory deals with more complex, slower to process emotions, things like love, guilt, and happiness. The last theory that we're gonna talk about today is Richard Lazarus's cognitive appraisal theory. Lazarus argues that after a stimulus is presented in the environment, that the brain cognitively labels or analyzes that situation. And once it does this, it produces both an emotional and physiological arousing response at the same time. This theory is very similar to the Cannon and Bard theory, but it adds that cognitive aspect to it. So now that we've gone through all the theories, let's do a few practice questions. Which theory would support the statement, we feel angry because we scream? You got it? If you guess the James Lang theory, you're absolutely right. You can see that the arousal brings about the emotional response. Which theory would support the statement, we scream when we notice that we feel angry inside and we're involved in an upsetting situation? This is definitely the Schachter two-factor theory because you can see the cognitive label aspect in there. Your brain is analyzing the physiological arousal and also the situation, which in turn elicits the emotional response. All right, last one. Which theory supports the statement, we scream because we feel angry? If you guess the common sense theory, you're right. The emotional response precedes the physiological arousal. That's it today, All-Stars. But before I go, let me ask you a question. Which of these series do you agree with the most? Write your answers in the comments below. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.